I realize that, you know, I love Baroque music so much, I'm not so sure I can teach it very well. Maybe you could just pick up my love of it and maybe that will work, but I'll try. Um, I'm going to separate it into instrumental music and then tomorrow I'll talk about choral music. Uh, uh, but let's see, a word to say about what I asked you to listen to yesterday. If you watch the guy on the wood lathe, uh, working wood in the 18th century, I think it was called, and you heard that music, I listened to it again. I took my own advice. And I was a little embarrassed uh, to realize that it was repeating a lot. I, I, I think it was repeating more than it was originally intended. Uh, I noticed that this time, uh, but I still listened to the whole thing last time and this time as well. Uh, and it made me think about the fact that I personally, I think I've maybe been a little bit, st I've starved myself from that kind of music. And when I heard it again, it was so sweet to hear that again. Uh, but uh, a couple things more to say about that. In Baroque music, there was something called ornamentation, where they didn't only play what was there. They added stuff. They added trills. They added turns. Tricky little stuff. And, and you know, I noticed that. Uh, vocalists did it. I think in the modern day, they maybe even do it too much sometimes. My father, he didn't understand that, about that. And he would get so annoyed when vocalist singing Handel's Messiah, for example, would do all this intricate stuff. And he said, why don't they just sing what's written? But I under understand that. But, but anyway, th th it was meant to be ornamented. Uh, and you listen for that. <laughs> and I have not background up here because, for me, Baroque music can't be background music. <laughs> I got background music, these barn swallows. Um, but, uh, you know, so many people have music on while they're doing other things. I can't do that, and I especially can't do that with Baroque music because it almost paralyzes me. I stop, and I have to listen to it. I can't, I can't do something else when there's music like that going on. It demands my attention, uh, and and I. It even occurred to me that I think I get a feeling from Baroque music, and maybe this is an 18th century feeling in a way, that the world must be okay. If you can have music like that, and people can still perfume, perf perform music like that, the world must be okay. It, it's orderly. It's not chaotic. Uh, and, and I like that feeling. Well, anyway, on we go. Baroque music. I'm going to give you some names. English. Uh, a guy by the name of Clark. I think Jeremiah Clark and Henry per uh, Purcell. Looks like Purcell, but it's Purcell because he was English. I should have put English here. They were early Baroque composers. And I'm, I'm not talking, now Purcell wrote a piece of choral music I'll talk about tomorrow, but I'm trying to limit myself to instrumental music. Both of them wrote trumpet voluntaries, which are very popular. Uh, people play them at weddings, and I think that's interesting that at weddings people will turn to this music and yet they won't listen to it at other times. Uh, and and that, that reminds, well, no, I'll wait till I get, uh, I'll tell you about something else I just thought of. Vivaldi, an Italian. Uh, now these were English, but actually with Baroque music you almost have to leave England. England went through a period of time where, where it had the reputation of being the land without music because it wasn't producing great composers. Uh, the, the great composers were in Italy and especially Germany. Well, anyway, Italy, Antonio, and Antonio Vivaldi, he was also early, early, and his instrumental work, The Four Seasons, is very popular. It seems to me summer might be the one that's the most popular. And, and I, I recommend it if, if you could find it. If you just want some, if you don't know about this music and you want to be led into it, here you go. And another thing on that, I, I think about the fact that as a kid, I discovered this music. I suppose it was largely because of my father. But then I, I think, and as I've taught, I've thought, I'll bet there are so many children who, who never really have much chance to hear this music, and they maybe don't realize it's there because nobody's selling it. Well, I'm giving you an intro, and I'll have something again to say about that here. Handel. 
a, a very much a favorite of mine. Handel was German. Handel and Bach were both born in the same year. I think it was 1685, I think. Both German, both wonderful. Handel a little simpler. Handel moved to England. He got permission to go visit England. Uh, there was a, a, a one of the Georges, I think the first of the King Georges was there, and, and he was actually from Hanover. He was, he was German, uh, original. But anyway, when Handel got there, he didn't go back. He liked London so much, he stayed. And, and well, all I remember, he, he went there, and it got very awkward for him, because when he went, the guy that gave him permission to go there was not yet king, and Handel didn't go back. Well, the kings changed, and, and, and this guy, George, became king of England. This was awkward now. Well, anyway, there's a story that Handel, who could have been in some pretty big trouble for that, won him over with his water music. Uh, and here is a, a score of uh, Handel's water music, together with his with his roy uh, music for the royal fireworks. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll show you a few more of these scores later on. Oh, wonderful. Just bum, 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 bum. You might recognize that from the Handel's, Handel's water music. Very, very popular and wonderful. The royal fireworks music, also wonderful. And uh, Handel's concerti Grossi. Here, here again is a Dover score. These are not very expensive. These are... These are published by Dover, and these are the complete scores. I mean, I suppose to many of you this would just look like a nightmare. But if you're a musician, especially if you can play the piano, it's quite very possible to follow this. This is what the conductor, this is what the conductor has in front of him as he's conducting a piece of music. Uh, I'll still show you another one of those. Uh, well, there's 12. I think there's 12 of these Concerti Grossi. And, uh, you know, I think of my oldest sister, who had a, uh, this is back in the days of records that were this big around, vinyl records, uh, and she had a collection of Handel's Concerti Grossi, and she gave them to me, and I took them to Brazil with me when I went into the Peace Corps. This would be back in 1968. It was the only classical music I had, or Baroque music I had in Brazil, and I listened to him some, the Brazilians used to wonder, what is that? What's he listening to? But then I was sort of starved for it too. And uh, I have a memory from Brazil too, in this little little town called Catole de Rocha. <laughs> I remember one time I heard coming out of the air, this beautiful, I don't remember what the piece was, but it was this beautiful piece of uh, Baroque music. Well, it was being blasted from the uh, church steeple on its uh, loudspeakers as part of a funeral, I think. And so the Brazilians, that was the only Baroque music I think they probably ever heard, these Brazilian peasants, and, and it was thought of as beautiful and, and it was used for funerals. So it wasn't necessarily a sad piece, but it had that effect. Well, anyway, I, I took, uh, I listened so much to those Concerti Grossi, uh, and I, I, I can't single any one particularly out, but uh, they're, they're wonderful to listen to. Uh, uh, Bach, Johann Sebastian Bach, arguably the best harmonizer the world has ever known. Uh, and I'll have more to say about him tomorrow with choral music. But his Brandenburg Concerti, there are six of them. Uh, uh, here, here again is a Dover... Uh, is a Dover publication of the uh, of the conductor scores. <laughs> you know, once again, they look like that. And I suppose to a normal person, that just looks like nothing but a mystery. Uh, but anyway, uh, the one I recommend, if you would like to listen to it, they're all good. But uh, an example is uh, is Concerto Grosso Number no. Two, the third mo movement. Uh, you might recognize the tune. It goes. Uh, and then the oboe comes in, the, the trumpet announces that theme, and then the oboe takes it up, and then a violin takes it up, and this is what's called counterpoint, and it's not all that long, uh, and uh, I really recommend this. Uh, Maurice André is just one example uh, on YouTube, um, posted by trumpetist. Trump, Trumpetista SP or PT. Uh, uh, 
It's wonderful. Uh, I mean, uh, and, and there's, there's others as well. Uh, you know, back to Handel, you might recognize this tune. Uh, it comes from the water, uh, water music. Da 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 da. It's uh, it's called the air, air from the water music or something like that. Hey, there's just so much of this. And then finally Haydn. I, I'm sort of going in chronological order. Uh, Haydn, his symphonies. He wrote so many symphonies. Uh, and now by the time we get to Haydn, you might call this classical music instead of Baroque music, maybe. It, music is changing uh, a little. Um, but anyway, uh, I would recommend to you, if you know nothing of Haydn, his trumpet concerto in E-flat, uh, the, the, the final movement though, the allegro at the end, it, it's all good, it's all good. Uh, and two choices that you could find on... Uh, on YouTube, one of them is uh, is Alison Bolson uh, performing in the Royal Royal Albert Hall in London. She's wonderful, also pretty. I mean, she's a real pretty woman, blonde, and playing trumpet unbelievably. Uh, I couldn't quickly find her playing the third movement of it. Uh, I think it might be at this website uh, or, or post posted by A L S. U Z maybe. You want to hear the third the third movement, all, although all of it is good. And this guy, Maurice Andre, he also plays that, that third movement. I mean it's all all over, I'm sure, YouTube and many people playing it. But you want to hear it done by the very best. And uh, that, that sort of features trumpet more than others, but it, it doesn't necessarily have to. This is just such a world of wonderful music. I, I you know I said at the beginning that I was I'm a little frustrated because I love this music too much to teach it very well. But if you can pick up from me some of this love of it and interest enough to listen and listen closely, uh, that might be worth more than anything else that I could tell you. See you tomorrow.